21 waiting. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to start adding people. I have to actually add them. Let me put my video on. Is that any McIrva? I think we're working. I can only start it. All right, all right. Oh, it's going fast. Wait, that might be safe. Hey, come here to fix this. Yeah. 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 All right. So we do the sound. Okay. Ethan, come here. Watch this video with me. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Good. Um, hey, what's up, Kevin? Everyone for joining, we're going to begin in a minute. Anthony, tell me when Joe's on, because then we'll get started. I think Joe is on. I am on. Very cool. Um, I recognize some names in here. That is cool. What's up? What's up, guys? How do you call? Joe. <laughs> Hope everyone Hi, Joe. is well. <laughs> Others, Joe. Oh, I think what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna mute everybody. Just for everybody to put their um, screens on mute. You get lots of ninjas. Look at this. Can you see me? The screen's kind of dark, huh? Joe, step from the window. I think we can see you better if you're not in front of the window. Yeah, that's a good idea. Look if she's so bright. I'm gonna move. Stop touching me. These windows. There we go. Oh, Kayla Gerson. Look at that. Sweet. Come. That's a nice. Um, we're gonna we're gonna get started in a this minute. Yeah. Off. Um. Yeah, every, it looks like most of you guys are on mute, which is great. We're going to have a um, we're, oh, an open discussion uh, later on, so anybody can obviously jump in and ask questions then. Uh, we'll try and do it, you know, one at a time to keep things uh, um, pretty smooth here. Um, all right, cool. So let's get started. I uh, wanted to thank everybody for joining. Uh, my name is Dr. Zuckerman. I'm the Vice President of the Center Court uh, Sports Academy. Um, for all the kids and all the kids listening, um, our main goal, we're, we've, uh, we started a webinar series a couple weeks ago, actually last week, and we just want to keep valuable information going to, um, to all of the, the Ninja community and the local community, uh, to keep everybody engaged with you know, some creative ideas, some workout ideas um, mm -hmm. throughout you know, the situation that, that uh, everybody's in right now. Um, joining us today, as uh, most of you probably know, are uh, Anthony DeFranco and Joe Capo, um, regulars on American Ninja Warrior, um, you know, basically developed our Center Court Ninja program. If uh, anybody here is outside of the club, they've helped us develop the program over the past couple of years and just uh, <laughs> overall good guys. Um, our main topic today, we're going to discuss uh, at-home ninja workouts, um, obstacle ideas, and then like I said, we're going to have an open discussion. You guys can ask the guys how they're doing. You can ask them any questions, any workout ideas, you know, just really anything at all. We just want to keep uh, keep an open forum. We're going to do that at, at the end. Um, the guys have some great information to share to start off with. Um, if you have any questions throughout, I think there might be a chat area. If not, just wait till the end, and we'll let uh, you know. We'll let you guys kind of throw out some questions. Um, I'm going to start with Anthony, who's uh, I think he's either in Costa Rica or just got back from Costa Rica. But um, <laughs> I'm quarantined. Just like everyone else. <laughs> um, either way, we are, uh, yep, I'm gonna let Anthony take over from here. Um, cool, and then uh, hopefully everybody enjoys. So real quick, I'm just gonna make sure everybody is muted. Um, and then Joe, just make sure you're unmuted real quick. And I'm our unmuted, we are good to go. Awesome. So, uh, welcome everybody. Thanks for uh, joining us here today. Um, to kind of give you a kind of understanding of what we're going over today. Obviously we're all stuck and confined to our houses. 
and we don't have anywhere to train. We don't have a fun ninja gym. So what can we do in the meantime? Um, how can we be creative with our workouts? How can we know exactly what equipment we should be getting and other cross training type things? So to get started on that, we're going to cover some equipment that uh, either both me and Joe use, um, maybe some workouts that, that we each do. But for equipment, number one thing is a pull-up bar for at home. If you have a pull-up bar, that's really kind of gives you the base for everything. So Joe has a pull-up bar there. I think we have the same one. I took mine down. It hooks Sick. to home. But um, something, something that's really important is to make sure that the molding itself is strong. You don't want that molding to come down because that's, that's not going to end well. You don't want to get injured. Yep. We don't want this coming off, guys. So make sure wherever you're putting this, this has a good, nice grip. Okay, and over here. That's why. Mm -hmm. Get it. And so something else that we tend to use a lot, or that I, I personally use a good amount, is um, something that is a, tr uh, a rock climbing trainer. It's called a hangboard. So if you can see right above here, this is called a hangboard, also known as a fingerboard. What you can do, you can use all different finger types here. Um, and there's many, many different workouts that you can do with that. I also have a little vertical limit hanging right here that could be used for training. Um, a lot of this stuff you can get on either different uh, websites like um, Monstro Ninja, which I know a, a lot of you are probably familiar with, or Atomic, or Three Ball Climbing. They have all of these different uh, training tools that you can use. Um, yeah, um, I would also suggest looking up Ninja Holds, right? So I have runners, which are the yellow things hanging right up here, if you can see them, and all different types of holds to make sure that you know, um, you're continuing with your strength training and on different grips, uh, not just finger strength and not just bar strength, you know, um, cause all the other grips like a fatter grip or a vertical, uh, grip, which is a rope grab or a nunchuck are super important and it's super, um, necessary to keep up with. So if you can get a hold of something like that, it's not always necessary, but, um, it's not maybe not necessary depending on how long the situation is going on for, but I would say it's if you can pick them up, it's good to have as an extra. Yep, it always helps working on all the different types of grips that you can uh, get your hands on from a literal standpoint. Um, one other training tool that you can use, I know a lot of kids might not be at the that point where they could use it, but this may be applicable to some people is a weight vest. So if you don't have an actual weight vest. This one's probably like about 15 pounds here. But what you can do is you can just take a backpack, throw some weights in it. You can find some things that are heavy around the house, whether you have like some cinder blocks outside, you can put that in a backpack and you can start doing some pull-ups with it. You can work on your strength that way. That's always really helpful. And uh, just kind of a random way to, uh, to change up workouts or use a certain type of, uh, or be creative with what equipment you have available to yourself. So a lot of people have backpacks and a lot of people have stuff around their house. So gotta, gotta be creative when yes. in the dire situations. Uh, I guess moving on from equipment, we have kind of some cross training that we can do for Ninja. Joe, I don't know if you want to touch on kind of some cross training that you do kind of incorporating the, the holds and the runners that you have. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I do something that's called mainly Tabata, right? It's a Tabata thing. It's usually, um, X amount of time on an obstacle with X amount of time rest, right? So I'll pick usually for me, it's about six, six arm obstacles, um, all different types of grips. So again, you know, I'll hang, you know, one station as a nunchuck station, another station as a, cliffhanger type station another station has a fatter grip another station will be like a bar grip and so on where i'll do about a minute on the obstacle trying to trying to stay up for the entire minute um and then 30 seconds of rest in between each obstacle right so 
Um, and then for the seventh station, I'll do seven stations total, six arms, and then the seventh will be about, will be like a leg or a cardio type obstacle. Um, and I'll run that three times. And depending on your skill level or ability level, your age, a lot, of, a lot that goes into that, um, you can up and down the time, right? Because you don't want to overdo the minute. So for some of you, a minute might be a lot, whereas 30 seconds might be more reasonable or 45 seconds might be more reasonable with maybe still a 30 second rest or maybe um, like 45 and 45, or if you want to do a minute, a minute, a minute. But if you can't hang for a minute or, or more yet, I wouldn't jump up to a, um, a time length like that. Um, so those are what most of my Monday circuits look like or one of my in-home workouts. Um, and then, I'll also, I forgot to add in a lock-off thing. So everyone, I'm sure most people know what a lock-off is. So another type of thing will be, some of it will go into dead hangs, where some of the groups will lock, which is hanging. Where'd he go? <laughs> at 90 degrees. Dead hang, here's a lock-off. So I'll run those all obstacles in either a dead hang or a lock-off. Um, and then I guess to, to, to broaden on, what Joe is explaining right now, similar, if you do have availability to a, um, to like the hang board that I have, um, you could do something similar where a lot of times the, the usual go-to timing on a hang board is seven seconds on and three seconds off. Yep. So you'll find whatever hold that you can, uh, whatever hold that is most comfortable for you, not most comfortable, but challenging, but not too hard where you kind of grab it, hang for seven seconds, rest for three seconds. And there's many phone apps that you can use that have um, the ability to change the different timings that you can do. One that I recommend is called yeah. Hangboard Same Timer. Time. That one is very straightforward, very simple. Um, it automatically comes with um, it inputting seven seconds on, three seconds off, coming with it. Um, Joe does something similar. I, I think he has that app, but he also, I, yeah, I have two apps. I have that. I have a Tabata timer. Um, I can type that to everybody in here and then hangboard app. So it's Tabata timer. And, and I will hang, actually hang it's hangboard app, hangboard timer. So hangboard timer. if anybody is confused, I will show you exactly how it comes up. This is all it is. It has a start button at the bottom. Actually, my phone's a little broken. If you can see that, but <laughs> It has all the different timings that you can put in. It has right now I have 30 second hang and a 20 second rest, but that was from one other workout, but it's a very simple app. It's uh, if you get it, put it together, it's simple to understand, but Hey, just so hey, know, hey guys, what do you recommend? Um, I guess Joe, while Anthony's working out, what do you recommend since the kids are mostly doing online schooling they're doing, they're probably in some sort of schedule. I mean, when's the, when's the best time to do this early in the morning after they're done with their, with their with their school work i don't know does it matter i i don't think it really matters i would say whatever whatever the child whatever the kid thinks is best you know if you want to wake up and do it then cool and maybe you need a little break from 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 your home from your school work you know and you can do it in between i would say the circuit that i was explaining or, or something that's a little bit of a longer circuit i would say for either before or after whereas something that anthony's explaining now which doesn't it might doesn't take as long but it's a good, it's a good in between, or like a, uh, maybe like a, a good thing to step away from from your schoolwork, or step away from whatever you want to do. Um, a, that little bit extra, it's that I think that's a perfect thing to do in between. So it's a little bit shorter of a workout, but it still gets you up and moving. And uh, and it kind of going through all this at the same time. Um, it obviously for kids and even for us adults, we want this all to be fun. We don't want to. If you try to train yourself too hard and it's too intense and you're not having fun with it, then kind of everything you're working for becomes too much and it ends up being negatively affecting you instead of benefiting you. So what we're trying to accomplish is to make this a fun uh, training session, but also making it challenging for ourselves. So uh, touching on that, a way to make workouts fun is making challenges. So how we just explain things. If you have like a sibling that does ninja as well, and you want to say, hey, you want, to have, you want to do a dead hang challenge, see who can hang the longest. If you have a special hold, you can say, uh, if you have a hang board or one of those holds that you can hang from a runner or whatnot, see who can hang the longest from that type of thing. 
Um, so anything you really want, be creative with it. Like I said, the whole weight in a backpack thing, um, you, you got to do what you got to do and, but always keep it fun if possible. Yeah. This, this sport was literally built off of challenging people to, to things. Um, so the only way you're really going to get better is by either seeing what you can, what, how you can limit yourself or how you can push yourself, uh, how you, yeah, how you can push yourself past, um, what you're quote unquote limits might be I, again I don't think there are any limits within the sport um or for any of you but I think you got to constantly push your limits and that's the only way you're really going to grow in anything but especially the sport um so that's why you know back to the workouts from before I said a lot of things for time you know my time on the obstacles right now is a minute but you know I'm eventually hoping to be able to do all of that for a minute and a half I can't do any of that so the first round I can probably get through a good amount of that for a minute, but after that, it's just absolute death. I can barely hang on to the bar and whatever. So eventually I would like to get to, through all that circuit for the entire minute, push it up. Uh, it's always about challenging yourself, different movements, different grips, different hang times, um, lock off, anything. Um, guys, my, guy, my, my kids are spending a lot of time in the backyard, you know, um, usually after they're done with their school. Is there any Anything they can do out there? I mean, we built a zip line. Are there any obstacles they can build, balance balance equipment, anything you recommend, just, you know, basics or stuff that even if they have time, they can go to Home Depot and get some stuff and build? Yeah, I mean, we can we can touch on balance real quick. Um, that's honestly, balance is super simple if you have wood and PVC. In most of our gyms, everything is uh, all balance is made off of wood and PVC. Um, you can even use a foam roller if you're inside. You can use a foam roller to, to try to balance on. But if you're in a backyard situation, um, if, you take, if you get like a 10-foot long piece of PVC, I think usually it's like four inches, a four-inch wide PVC is usually about that big. Um, but you can lay that on the ground, use that to run across, and have that as a simple balance obstacle. If you simply elevate it off the ground a little bit, with something else, then that makes it a little bit more complicated of a balance obstacle. So you, you can really do anything with wood and PVC. Another thing I have like right here, there's a piece of plywood. I could use this as many things if I, if I put it on an angle this way, right? It's a different balance obstacle. If I lay it flat on the ground, I can use it as a precision bar. If we, know, if we don't know what a precision uh, trainer is, it's basically something that if it's on the ground there, I can jump to it, work on my precision, precisions where I can stick, right? And with that, you can simply, that from, from different things also, sorry, Ann, but like you can do that from, from a bar or from, um, you know, different types of swimming <laughs> things. You can do it off the couch. I don't know uh, what your parents or, <laughs> or whatever, when you're doing off the, off the couches and stuff, but um you know, I, we, I, we have a bunch of kids on the team that are literally jumping off their couches and off their walls all the time. So there's plenty of, of um, even including myself, to be honest with you, um, plenty of spaces that you can do all that in different ways. Yeah, so um, I guess to go over what you could buy to help make some of these things, um, going to the store or going, let's say you go to Home Depot, you can get like an eight foot two by four. That's a very yeah, basic thing that most, most uh, Home Depots have. Um, and you can use that to hang it across different ways. Um, you can cut it up to make different precision trainers. Like I said, if you just have pieces of wood like this, you put them all different areas around the, the, your backyard. You can jump to them and whatnot and uh, make them different. Turn them on their sides so you can balance across them uh, so that it's like a tall, a tall um, so you're walking across the top of it like this, all right? It works on good, just very good ankle stabilization thing. Um, and it mimics, I would say, the slack line. I know a lot of people have trouble on the slack line. So it's a very similar technique to a slack line. Um, and even getting a slack line, that's, if you don't have one, yeah. that's a great idea to do. Uh, I have a slack line. I, I put it outside sometimes and me, me uh, and my girlfriend, Heather, we play around on it. Um, the old guy gets entertainment from it too. He, uh, he smiles at us. So. Uh, <laughs> So um, anything you can have fun with. If you have a slack line, you could be jumping to another piece of wood or say another piece of PVC. Uh, we don't want to go too complicated on how to build different things. 
Um, but for for starters, two by four and PVC. And PVC. Yeah, and you're and you're good to go. That covers almost every bounce that you'll ever come across. Exactly. And I guess so. Um, moving on to um, I guess some some general strength type things. What can you do at home besides just ninja training? Because a lot of times when we ninja train, um, we're doing a lot of pulling. Right. We need to, and when you're, um, I guess, working, working out as an athlete, you want to be able to work both opposing muscles. So you want to work your, your chest while you're working your back. Meaning, when you do all your ninja stuff, you're working on all your pulls. So you need to offset that and strengthen the chest. And so I, t earlier today, I did, I did a push workout, working my chest and my triceps in this five-foot radius right here where I, I turned this chair around that I'm sitting in. I used it as a dip station. Um, I'll give you, show you an example real quick. So this chair, right there, can you see? Yes. I'm gonna go here, down in front of you, and you can go down. So that is one way that you could do a dip as a push exercise. And here on the ground, 10 feet of space here. You could do any push ups. It's not to the side of you, but as long as you can go down, you're good. And then working on different challenges, something you could do is how many push ups you can do in a row. Um, um, see how many push ups you can do in a row. Um, kind of make a push-up workout where you say, I'm going to do 10 push-ups of diamond push-ups, which work your triceps more. I'm going to do 10 yeah. wide push-ups. I'm going to do 10 neutral push-ups. So there's many different ways you can, uh, you can vary it up. There's even offset push-ups when you're one hand's up, one's down. Um, so you, in the end, it's about being creative, like I've said. It's just having some fun with it. Exactly. Guys, can I, um, before your next topic, what um, dietary recommendations, just while everybody's stuck at, you know, home for most of the day, besides just eating snacks and cookies and whatnot and jelly beans, my kids have jelly beans for breakfast, which is awful, but sometimes <laughs> you can't avoid it. Um, um, but yeah, just any, any, any advice there would be, I think, huge. There's a lot, of, a lot of little ones listening in, so. Well, for the little ones, my, my thing is I just, I, it's going to sound crazy, but I don't really eat that much sugar at all. Um, I don't drink sugar. I don't eat it. No candy. Um, every now and then, obviously, I got to be realistic, but, um, you know, if you want to get to your next level of training or just in general, stay healthy, it's good. It's a good idea to, to do that in all aspects, not just your training, right? So you have to, it's a whole lifestyle. Um, you got to make sure you're drinking water. You got to make sure you're eating, eating your greens. You got to, you know, and this is all your typical stuff that you hear all the time. Um, but there's a reason why you hear it. And that's why you have to, to follow it and go through it. Uh, with it um, I limit my ingredients in the foods that I'm eating and that's you know that's more for the parents sake I guess I try and eat more or quote-unquote organic stuff or whatever that considers but um, but I'm pretty straightforward nothing nothing crazy yeah and, and and don't obviously once in a while you can go get some ice cream not saying to go overboard and be like super strict there was a yeah. point that I personally was really strict with my diet um, I wouldn't eat, I don't think there was a point where I, I didn't even, I wouldn't even eat a slice of pizza. Um, I love pizza. So, um, so reward yourself. Don't, that doesn't mean be perfect. All right. Yeah. None of us are perfect. Be for the majority, have a good plan. Have, make sure you wake up in the morning, maybe get some fruit, whether you want some eggs, have a, have a healthy breakfast. All right. Um, and then for lunch, try not to like, Lunchables, we all love them. I, I don't know if many kids eat them these days, but Lunchables aren't the most nutritious things. Um, try to get, try not to only eat pizza. Try to get something where it's, there, there's some protein in there. You got some, uh, some good fats. For example, I don't know if you guys like avocados, but avocados are great for healthy fats. Um, and um, you always, even though people talk about the keto diet, or whatever, a lot of times you need carbs to fuel yourself. So don't be afraid to eat carbs. If it's pretty natural, 
then it's probably okay for you. Um, so yeah. Um, the, in the end, if we're stuck inside, we, we have to work with what we have. Um, but try to shop healthy. Obviously as you're, if you're kids, you're not going to really be doing too much food shopping, but if you go to the, the food store with your mom or your dad, say, Hey, this looks cool. I've seen, I've seen some people eat this. This is really healthy. Can we try this? It doesn't, it doesn't hurt to try new things. <clears throat> Does anybody have any, I guess, if you want to type in the chat, I don't know if anybody has any questions about, about any food options or whatnot. If you do, you can just throw it down there. Um, there usually is, there is a chat option if you want to type anything. Yeah. Um, but I guess now we can probably move into the open discussion. Um, so everybody, I, I see that Jack Davidson just asked us a question. There uh, we go. Steak. <laughs> about steak. Yeah, I mean, I, I eat steak. I know I there steak. is, there are some, um, I guess, some questions about, about red meat in general um, being, being good for you or not. I am not a nutritionist. Yes, um, me either. <laughs> but, but I do, uh, I do have steak probably maybe once a week. Um, I enjoy it. So I'm, I mean, I'm not going to completely restrict myself from eating it. And it, there, there are some benefits to it. Yeah. I mean, I, I eat it. Um, I try and do a meat once a day. I do a, a meat with a, a veggie and then at night I'll do like a full, a full veggie meal. Um, just to make sure I'm getting all my vegetables in and stuff. Um, okay. but nothing. I, I eat it. I eat it. And I try and make sure it's not from like, a. I try and make sure it's more along the, the again, or, or quote unquote organic side, whatever that means. Um, I don't, I don't order food out when I'm, like let's say at a baseball game or something like that because i don't know where that meat is and how good that meat was pro like if, how processed it was and things like that so grass-fed is also something good to always look yeah. for yeah uh, because a lot a lot of um if we're going back to the origin a lot of animals are fed just like corn and different wheats and stuff which then that doesn't create a healthy animal which then that's why grass-fed animals are are probably a healthier um meat to go with because they have more nutrients in them all that um next question we got from xavier exercises on a pull-up bar if you have no holds what do you got <laughs> so joe i know you have the pull-up bar hung up right there yeah. right yeah show 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 us man so hmm. well i mean we got pull-ups uh, this is oh x x x i see you <laughs> What's up, man? Um, regular. I mean, you got your regular pull-ups. You can do lock-offs. You can do one-arm lock-offs. Um, you can do ones where you're holding the bar and you make moves to the side. Oh, yeah. That's right. I don't know if you can see me. You can do chin-ups. This is a pull-up. This is a chin-up with your hands. Right, we'll Obviously, pull-up. You know, we have a lock-off where you just hold. You can work on one-arm lock-offs. You can also do leg raises and all your other core exercise. Leg raises, core exercises. Um, in terms of, so I'll just show leg raises when your feet come to the bar. Um, what else? We have, again, like Anthony was saying, you know, you can work on switching back and forth, right? I would say another good thing is to, um, if you don't have the hold, you can also grab less of the bar. Right, so instead of doing a full grab, you know, you can grab just on your fingers. So, again, if you just want to see what that looks like, so maybe grabbing here instead of here. So, Joe, I'm, I'm not the shortest guy in the world. This thing is exactly my height. So, what can I do so like I don't move that much? Keep your feet up. <laughs> yeah, that's it, man. That's it. You want, way, you want a core exercise while doing it? Look, this thing's almost at my head, right? I, I, I see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta uh, do with what you got. Yeah. So, you gotta make it work. Do what you got. Exactly. How much? Uh, how much cardio do you guys do in between all this? I guess because Jack is asking another good question about treadmill running outside. I mean, that's what I do. I don't work out like you guys, but I try and run every day. Um, um, yeah. What's uh, what's 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 a good mix? How do you guys mix in cardio? 
Well, most of well, in in general, most of my cardio comes from courses and on uh, so course runs when we're training at the gym. Um, and then on Tuesdays, I do my run. I do a mile run. But right now, uh, it's looking like Tuesdays. I'm doing my mile run, and then um, some of the cardio is going to come from the circuits that I've been doing. And then on Thursdays, I've been mixing in obstacles with sprints. Um, so we're going to see how that goes. Again, we're only a week or two into into this home workout stuff. So I'm still figuring it out myself a little bit, but um, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I, I, I personally do, uh, I, I do some sprints. I have a track background. So I, I, I kind of like yesterday, I was outside um, right in my apartment complex. I was doing sprints up and down. I set two different points where one was about 30 feet. Another was about 60 feet. So I would have a starting spot and I would sprint to the 30 foot one go back to the start and then I sprint to the 60 foot one and then I'd rest for a couple of minutes. Um, and then I, I did that, I think five times. Um, and then I did a bunch of plyometrics, which is kind of like explosive leg exercises where, I, where you're kind of jumping off each leg. Um, so there, there's many things you can do outside and just regular squat jumps. Yeah. I would, on leg power. I would suggest running outside over a treadmill. Yes. Yeah, uh, and it's, it's easier on any your type of cardio. cardio. The treadmill uh, hurts your shins a lot. Um, I I saw Mikey wants to know how many days should he work out. Um, so I I always say you should probably give yourself one day between workouts. So if you say you do like a ninja based workout, you do a lot of upper body, a lot of grip. I would probably take the next day off at least, um, and then you can go back into it, do another day. Yeah. And that really, I guess, um, not to contradict Anthony, but that like, that kind of goes on a how you feel basis. Um, you know, like Anthony's body, he can't really handle it as much. Whereas I do not, oh, well, not that you can't handle it as much, but like your hands and stuff don't hold up. What? I get injured. Yeah. Um, whereas I'm, I'm pretty much on upper body almost every day. So, but the, the thing is I'll do like Monday, Wednesday, Friday that are super hard on the upper body, whereas Tuesday, Thursday are a little lighter. So I'll still use the muscles, but not as, as drastic as I was. So it's like an act of rest in a way. Yeah, so, rest, uh, rest is important. So you know, rest yeah, is super important. For example, yesterday, Joe, his, yes. um, he, had a, he had a set plan going into yesterday, but he had to adjust because his body felt super tight. Um, he didn't feel like he would be able to get a quality workout. So he took the day as a rest day and he stretched and rolled out. Um, so taking yeah. days like that are really important. You need to, your body needs time to rest and recover. So, 100%. and you have to listen to it. Yeah. I would highly suggest that because then you don't listen to it is when injury happens. And, you know, I am obviously trying to avoid injuries at all costs on, from all of our levels. So, um, yeah, definitely listen to it. Yes. I see that Darwin asked that he's found a bunch of the pull-up bars at Goodwill. Do a strong tree branch. Yeah, a strong tree branch works as a pull-up bar. Mm -hmm. Two by four to the top of your doorway. But you I used my tree outside yesterday to work out. Or two, <laughs> no, not yesterday. Uh, last week, I mean. Yesterday. Yeah. It works if it's strong. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I hung the holds up that I have over here on the tree, and uh, I did a whole workout with that. There you go. Um, so Jack asked about handstands. Love handstands them. Are great. Handstands Love are great. Them. You need to work. That, that's touching on being able to work the, uh, the opposing muscles, so your push muscles. Um, handstands are awesome. Find, find a wall to, that you can flip up to for starters. Um, yep. If you have experience and you're able to hold a handstand, that's great. Um, maybe do some handstand push-ups. There's all the different variations. Uh, monkey bars. Hudson has a question about using monkey bars to work out. Yeah, I guess. Monkey, you can yeah, you got your own. Monkey bars are great. Uh, yeah, I think that's great. Hudson, you can. You, can um, you know, I would I would suggest running circuits or like challenge yourself to see how many times you can get back and forth on the monkey bars or um see how many different ways you like how many different like different styles that you can go through can you do it hands backwards hands forwards can you do it sideways can you do it in a lock off um 
you know, um, I don't know what your monkey bar setup is, but can you angle them? Can you angle the monkey bars? Can you turn them sideways so you can do it as a vertical grip? There's, there's a lot of different, uh, different suggestions and ways that you can go about it. Um, again, that comes back to challenging yourself, but you know, you can do it like one day, maybe you want to do a circuit on the monkey bars where you go 30 seconds on the monkey bars, 30 seconds off, or, and then maybe that's like your Monday workout or Tuesday, you'll come up and be, all right, I'm going to complete the monkey bars this way, like in a lock off in, in, a, in a, in a skipping monkey bars, I'm going to do it backwards. I'm going to do each one 10 times. And that's going to be a skill work or a technique type day. Um, so there's plenty of options around that. And even if you're, if at home you're lucky enough to have some sort of uh, setup there, whether it's uh, like a, a rig where you can hit some obstacles and whatnot, that's awesome. Um, you can make an entire course just in your backyard. Um, okay. So, so making different obstacles from hanging things in different areas. Yep. Um, I know some people. If you, I know Lucas, you have a setup in your basement, which is awesome. <clears throat> some people they can they hang. Um, different eye bolts throughout their ceiling. So like right now I'm pointing to my ceiling. They put two by four studs all the way across like this. Um, I would recommend having somebody that knows what they're doing, knows how to hit studs to make sure everything is going in very strong. Um, yeah. But yeah, because again, safety is very important. You need to make sure that you're, you're not, things are not ripping out of the ceiling because that's how we get injured. That's not good. Um, but so a lot of people do have that where they have things going straight into their studs. So uh, you can do a lot of stuff with that. Um, I don't know if you guys have any questions about that. I'm sure we can connect you with, with some people who know how to install different things. Um, it's, uh, there's a lot of people out there who are very educated on creating obstacles. Uh, Someone would like to see in Lucas's basement. <laughs> Oh yeah, is that it? Lucas, can you show your basement quick? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so exactly what we're talking about here. These are the balance obstacles. Very nice. I Notice can't that. tell if you can see in bars, see. right? It's just so it's the uh, bars from Home Depot. Yep. Uh, railroad ties for Home Depot. I got the uh, what are they called? The the it's the uh, ninety degree angle that it spins. So it's the bottom yeah, flange, and, the pipes. and then the ninety degree angle so that's raised, so that it's it's a little bit more stable. And then they come in different sizes, and I also got the PVC, so it spins on that one. Uh, and then these are all different PVC pipe pieces that we put together so that it can uh, easy, awesome. to, easy to step on. Mm -hmm. These are BOSU pods, which are great for doing work on, but then also for push-ups or balance, they're, they're, they're good for on top as well. Here's the PVC pipe that you can step on and spin. All different holds, UFO, nunchucks. There's the, the, what's going on? You disappeared. <laughs> you see you? Can you see us? Yeah, yeah we yeah. see you. Oh, so. well, that's Over funny. There. I don't see you at all. So <laughs> I don't know if you're seeing anything. Yeah. But um, so this is uh, the Alevia, the Dua, what's the brand the name, the Canadian company? That makes the oh the clamping yeah they clamp around clamping the uh, pull up bars yeah they clamp in uh, and then here's the Sun City build that has all different holds to it cliffhangers uh, it has the the campus boards yep. there's your Legit. There's your uh, Anthony. You're just talking about the the hang board, the <laughs> uh, shay bars. Lucas is doing uh, pegboard right now. He can do uh, vertical limit. So all sorts of options. Nice setup there. 
That's awesome. But I, yeah, I, that's I, I've, I've gone to Home Depot and built a lot of these obstacles, the balance obstacles, by myself. Uh, but there, so there, there's there's a lot of pieces there. They're fun to build. I the the hanging stuff that Sense City did. I I I wouldn't trust myself to hang stuff from the ceiling. But, but Montreal holds has tons of holds that you can do, whether it's the uh, the hook kind or the regular kind. But uh, but definitely cool stuff to keep training. Yeah. So that so if you're if you're lucky, you have that. So Luke <laughs> can probably put a whole a whole course together and uh, have a whole cool training session. I, I just made this uh, the. This awful obstacle that you guys have, which is the 10 foot PVC <laughs> with, the, with the caster wheel, so it spins. Spin that's the on. latest challenge. <laughs> but that's all from Home Depot. Yeah. And a lot of times it's not that expensive. You can do a lot with, uh, with 100 bucks when it comes to when you're working with wood and PVC. The pipe sometimes gets expensive, but for the most part, PVC is very cheap. Yes. Any other questions? Any other <laughs> oh, there you guys are. Yeah, we're back. Um, other questions, I guess? Oh, everybody wants to come over to the basement now. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Social so over one at a time. <laughs> I know, one at a time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I've gotten, uh, Lucas, it's, uh, the brand is called Perfect Bar. They, they, they make bars in the refrigerated section that I've had for a while, uh, but they have like a, it's called peanut butter cookie. It's a kid size, but it's uh, peanut butter and different vegetables and protein. Also, it's good for like uh, to start your day with breakfast or something along with that. I had, those things are good. I had those. I think I have, I think they're in my fridge. <laughs> and then uh, at, at, at Costco, uh, no one ah, eats tuna go. anymore, but at Costco they have uh, the Wild Planet Skipjack tuna, which is like a much safer tuna because it's not with all the mercury because they're where they're where they're fishing it. Uh, Interesting. Tuna is a very good source of protein, but I, I don't know if, if kids eat tuna anymore. <laughs> but it's it, that was one of the things that was not sold out at Costco and everything else was. They still had pallets of it. <laughs> they still have food options. There. Cool. Any other questions? No, no. I guess. Hey, right, I guess. Are you um, got anything? Well, uh, yeah, we'll we'll wrap it up. We're gonna, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, these guys obviously are training hard, but we're gonna try and uh, get you guys involved in these as often as we can. You know, once a week, every other week, just to keep everybody dialed in. Um, you know, hopefully, obviously, we'll be back at the club as soon as we can. Um, for all the parents, we do have a brand new Center Court um, initiative all through this time that we're launching. It's called Center Court 360. It's a pretty awesome initiative. Um, this is mostly for older kids, for high school kids, but we're, um, we're working on a new mission where we're trying to develop the entire athlete, not just training, but also education, promoting leadership, mindfulness, healthy lifestyles, confidence. Um, and uh, professional speaker series as well that we're going to be starting. So we're going to actually launch that this week. You'll probably get some information on that, which is uh, it's very cool. It's mostly, again, geared towards high school students, um, but, uh, but even younger kids as well. So what Center Court is doing is we're, 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 we're adding on the, you know, the, the, you know, the healthy lifestyle and athleticism. And we're also, we have um, a handful of staff that are educators, professionals, um, even technology experts. Um, um, you know, psychologists, stuff like that, that we're getting involved in our family. So, uh, um, so that's pretty cool. Um, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have. Um, the guys hope might be, you know, maybe they'll be posting some of their workouts as well. And, and again, we'll try and chat with them as often as we can. Anything um, else from you guys? We're here. I mean, if you have any questions or any workout questions and, or if you need help making a workout or something, definitely reach out to us. Um, you can, yeah, we're basically just our, at home, so. Yeah, I mean, you can you can find us on Instagram. Uh, me personally, my username is DeFranks, D E F R A N K Z Z, and Joe is just Joe Capo One. So you yep. can send us a message. Um, we're more than happy to help. You can also email us. 
Uh, I'm Anthony at centercourtclub.com and Joe is Joe at centercourtclub.com. So anything you have, send them our way. We're more than happy to help. Yes. Hope you guys all uh, kind of took something away from this and uh, you're either one more motivated to, to have more fun with your workouts or that you've learned different types of workouts and training styles. Um, but also make sure you're safe with everything you're doing. Yep. Um, safety first. So thanks for uh, joining us today, guys. Oh, yeah, thank you, guys. All right. Have a good one, guys. Happy quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for hosting us, guys. No problem.